you guys, I read a great book by a great author based out of a great city. It's called Beautiful by Sylvia Hubbard. Y'all want to hear about it? Here it go. So you guys, I was thoroughly impressed with this book, Beautiful by Sylvia Hubbard. Um, she is a author based out of Detroit and she writes her books with a Detroit backdrop. So I went into this book having a certain expectation and that was basically that I was going to hear some what up those and somebody was going to get some chili cheese fries from Coney Island and somebody was about to cross eight mile at some point in time, you know, a lot of the basic things that you see associated with Detroit. And that's cool. You know what I mean? But this book had scientists and entrepreneurs and child geniuses and big old pretty houses in Boston Edison. And although I did not get any of the expected Detroit things, everything about this book felt so Detroit. It was, in my opinion, authentically Detroit. Like it was just a whole Detroit vibe. It was a reminder that everything that comes out of the inner city is not, um, dare I say, ghetto and hood. If you are looking for a book that is not um, your standard urban literature, this is a really, really great read. So a uh, really quick Tam Telling Tales synopsis of the book, not spoiler, of course, is that we have our main character, Madison, who is a very smart young woman, college grad student, and she is just bound to be um, phenomenal, okay? And there are folks around her who know it and are leeching on to her. In the meantime, she's also discovered that she's fallen in love with some folks and some things transpire that makes this relationship fall to pieces. And then we fast forward several years later and we see how everybody is doing in their current day. And so current day unleashes a whole bunch of other foolishness with our main character and her love interest, which is Jabbar. And um, it was super fun to read this. Like all throughout the book, we got little um, nuggets of suspense happening. Like, dun, dun, dun. Like I could hear that playing in my head after certain parts. I was like, oh, okay, so now I know I got something to look forward to as I keep on reading. And then, of course, by the end, the all the loose ends get tied up, right? And so while my one critique I would probably have of this book is that towards the end, it seemed like there were so many um, loose ends that were getting tied up at once. It was all kind of coming together and it felt a bit rushed. So mm, that's probably my one critique. However, this book was so good. I loved how she gave us these characters that you thought you knew who they were and how they moved, but in actuality, you had no idea. And then later on, you ended up finding out all kinds of new and interesting things about them. And um, I am a fan. I, I am a total fan. And if you are familiar with Selena Montgomery slash Stacey Abrams and how she writes romance, with um with the suspense and it's very witty and, in, and intelligent reading but still fiction and entertaining this is going to give you that same vibe 
in my opinion, it was actually a little bit better. Um, while I enjoy the other stuff, I felt like Sylvia Hubbard was able to avoid some of the pitfalls of some of the other stuff I've seen in other books and really give us the meat of the story and keep us engaged without thinking that it was too much given to us. There wasn't a lot of wordiness. Everything felt relevant as you were reading it. And, um... I'm probably going to read something else from her because, yeah, like I'm a whole fan. So, I am giving Beautiful by Sylvia Hubbard for Acrylic Nails. <laughs> there was suspense. There was intricate discussion about science there was a really trashy family and because you just can't avoid them in any area in the city in the suburbs nowhere child and um it was some freaky stuff going on and i kind of want to talk about that because the author gave us a very unorthodox romantic relationship in this book and um if I were to say what was happening out loud, I really feel like somebody would be like, ooh, so that was nasty, nasty, huh? But when I was reading the book, it didn't seem like it was that bad. It was kind of like, oh, okay, well, I could see how that would work. But in essence, it was just like, it was a lot. It was extra than a mud and, um... It actually caught me off guard. I had to clutch my invisible pearls a time or two because I said, oh, <laughs> okay then. Madison is nasty. She's a nasty girl. Uh, but y'all know what I'm starting to think. I'm starting to feel like every great, wonderful person had to come from a dysfunctional family. Because, baby, the dysfunction of Madison's family, it hurt my feelings for her. It really did. It, it hurt my feelings. Um, something else that I want to kind of touch on as well is that Madison is a grown woman who don't know it. When we start off this book... Madison is like 25, 26. She, she up there in age. She's no spring chicken, okay? But she's in college. And so you might, your mind might, you know, put her in a younger place because of her being a college student, living where she live at, and some of the issues that she's going with with her family. In your head, you might be thinking like, sis, you grown. I need you to act like it. Like, come on now. But... Um, her family was trash, but Madison absolutely was not. She was amazing. And that's why I say some really great, phenomenal people come from some trash families. They got some raggedy daddies. They got some raggedy mamas. They got some raggedy sisters and brothers, but they persevere and they become great, just like our main character, Madison, did. So, shout out and kudos to all of the people who made it out of the Struggle Bus family. I'm so proud of y'all. Blessings to you. Because I know it couldn't have been easy. Because if I had to go through what this girl was going through, baby, I would burn this whole house down. Everybody just probably going to have to meet their demise sooner than later. Mm -hmm. Don't play with me. I don't care who you are. I really uh, need to talk about this book with some folks. I might even have to hit up the author so I can have a conversation with her. Because I really want to talk about this um, relationship. Because, I mean, unorthodox, yes, is the term that I use. But I just, I feel like I need to have a more in-depth conversation 
with the author because the way this situation was written, I mean, sis almost had me considering some things, <laughs> okay? I said, I know that's not where my head is going. Oh, my earring. Hold on. I'll be right back because I didn't drop the earring. I can't do nothing without my earring. Okay, I'm back. I'm going to try to not be so rambunctious when I talk about these books so I don't lose my earrings no more. What was I talking about? Um. Oh, I was talking about this relationship. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Miss Sylvia Hubbard. Girl. Is you nasty? Because, uh... Yeah. <laughs> i am totally encouraging you guys to pick up this book and read it if you have it already if you have though tell me what you thought down in the comment section and don't forget to um subscribe and hit the notification bell for my channel so that you know every time that i upload a video and again i love the book I am encouraging all of you to pick it up and enjoy if you haven't already. And I'm Tam. I'm selling tales. Read a book. <laughs>